Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a portable paint booth. I realize that I don't often tell you guys why I'm building these things or the constraints that I have to work within, so I'm gonna do that now. You see me paint outside a lot, and that's not ideal because it's hot, there's often bugs, and sometimes it's even raining, but I need to be able to paint either in my shop or in a more controlled environment outside the shop. Lately I've been building this prop sword on my live stream on Twitch and it's ready to paint. So I'm gonna build a small paint booth that I can either use in the shop or outside, but it's got two big constraints. One, I want it to be cheap. I've got a lot of scrap material around here that I can use and I plan on doing that as much as possible. And number two, it has to be collapsible. I don't have room to store a big box, so I need to be able to fold this thing up and stick it behind a tool when it's not in use. All right, let's do it. Sometimes when pieces are too big to cut with my table saw, I use this guide on my circular saw and it makes it a lot easier to cut them down to more manageable sizes. In this case, I cut down a piece of eighth inch melamine that I had into three equal pieces to use for the back and the two sides. On the back panel, I measured up from the bottom and in from each side to figure out where to put the hole for the filter. Those lines are there to show me the area to cut out and I'm gonna put a box fan behind it and a filter. But then I realized that I don't actually want the filter centered vertically and horizontally. I want it in a corner so that the paint booth can stand upright or on its side and the fan can be in the same position. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Instead of centering them, I'm using this same distance two inches from this edge and from this edge and then I measured in to find the square that I want, which is actually over here. So it'll be offset a little bit in one corner. To start cutting that area out, I drilled a hole in the corner and then used my least favorite tool of all time, the jigsaw, to cut out the lines. Now, this material is really thin and cheap and it doesn't cut well and the jigsaw doesn't help. So I had to sand it down a little bit just so it wasn't rough to the touch, but it really doesn't matter what it looks like. I made sure that the filter fit before moving on. I cut down some more pieces of eighth inch plywood, this is also scrap that I had, to use for the top and the bottom panels, and I cut down a couple of pieces with a crosscut sled to act as flaps. You'll see where those flaps are used later on. I cut down two pieces that were the same width, and then ripped them in half on the table saw. I needed some really big hinges, but rather than using piano hinges or something expensive, I decided to use my leftover scrap material from my outdoor sink build. I measured the panels that I had already cut and used the height to cut down some strips of this material. The width of these strips doesn't really matter at all, I just wanted to make sure that it would cover the two pieces that it was going to connect well. The rotary cutter works really well for cutting these and especially along a straight edge, but you gotta be really careful. That thing is super sharp and I had it nick my finger one time, not good. I cut down some smaller pieces to act as hinges in the other places as well, both for the top and the bottom panels and for the flaps. Again, you'll see the flaps in a little bit. Also, I wasn't worried about the frayed edges at all because they're gonna get covered up. I lined up the panels and then used some barge contact cement to attach the hinge. This goes on two surfaces and once they touch, they lock together. So the first surface here is this white area. Now you don't want these two white pieces to touch each other, you wanna cover them with the hinge. As I was covering this area, I realized how much cement I was gonna have to use to make all these hinges. I decided to go ahead and finish this one out, but not to use it for the rest of them. I covered the fabric and the melamine and I let them both dry for about five minutes. I used an eighth inch piece of wood as a spacer in between the two panels and then laid on the hinge. As soon as these touched, they bond, so I immediately had a workable hinge. I covered the frayed edges with some duct tape. This isn't really adding any strength here, although I guess it doesn't hurt, but really it was just to stop any stray fibers from falling off while I was painting. It also covers up some of that excess cement so that the two pieces won't stick together if they accidentally come in contact. I did basically the same hinge on the other side, but I used Super 77, which is a spray adhesive, and it works the same way. You spray it on the two surfaces, let them dry, and then once you touch them together, they bond. Now overall, this stuff is not quite as strong as barge, but in this case, it actually held better than the barge did. I covered this one with duct tape as well, and I realized that if I wrapped it around the bottom of the panel, it would actually help with strength a little bit. I just had to do a few cuts just to make sure that the opening for the filter was there. To add the bottom panel, I had to make one small adjustment. I used some Super 77 as well, and did it on the hinge, but before I put the panel in place, I used two pieces of 8th inch plywood to work as a spacer. This is because this piece is going to lay over the two side panels, so it needs to be a little bit further out. I covered the back side of this hinge with Gorilla Tape, and I realized that I should have been using that all along. Gorilla Tape is just stickier and stronger than normal duct tape. Later on, I went back and added Gorilla Tape to the back of all of the hinges, making sure they were in their closed position before I put that tape on. 
And while I'm finishing that up, I want to thank Casper for sponsoring this video. You've probably heard me talk about them a million times. They make awesome mattresses. It's a combination of memory and latex foam, so it's not too squishy, it's not too bouncy, it's super comfortable and just right. It's awesome. You order it online, they ship it to you in a box, and you get to sleep on it for 100 nights. If you don't like it for any reason, they come pick it up and they give you your money back. I highly recommend these mattresses, and if you want to try one out, go to casper.com make, use the code make, and you get $50 off. And finally, those flaps I've been talking about. These flaps go on the two sides of the top and the bottom panels. They're gonna help it actually hold together as a box in just a minute. These get folded in before that panel gets folded over. And last, I needed a way to hold these panels into the shape of a box. So I decided on Velcro. I got these adhesive back panels at the fabric store. I put one side down onto the outer side of the flap and then I laid the other side of the Velcro on it, but I didn't pull off the plastic backing. Once I had four of these squares on each one of the flaps, I pulled off the backing from all the squares. This stuff is really sticky, and once it sticks, you're not getting it off. So I made sure to be really careful and lifted up the sides and got the flaps laid right into place before I really pressed them down. When I pulled them away, one side of the Velcro stayed on the side panels and the other stayed on the flaps. The Velcro held it into the box shape even when I lifted it up and flipped it around. It did a pretty good job. I hot glued on the filter just in case I needed to swap it out later. I laid it on its back and unfolded the whole thing just to see how flat it was in its final form and how easy it was to move around. It's really lightweight, it sets up in about 20 seconds flat, and it's easy to stand either upright or put on its side. It's a little bit big to carry out a door, but since you can flatten it out, it's really easy to put it wherever you want to use it. I intentionally didn't attach the box fan because I want to be able to use it for other things, but if you just set it right up against the filter, it does its job just fine. And you can turn the box on its side, and it also fits there. I finally got to spray some latex onto my sword prop. If you want to see what's next on that project, be sure to check me out on Twitch. As I was about to film this segment, another video popped up on my feed on YouTube, and it was another portable paint booth done by DIY Tyler. He did a really great job, but his is a very different approach where the fan is actually built into it and the whole thing folds up together. I'm going to link it down in the description so you should go watch his and compare it to this one and see which one works best for you because they're both good options, but they are different. I hope this video was helpful for you. I'd love to know what you think about it down in the comments below. I've got a lot of other videos for you to check out and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss all the new stuff coming up. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.